dentists and creators often ask me, Alessandro, should I go for the Sony A7C2 or the new Nikon Z5 II? They are both full frame cameras, cost about the same and deliver outstanding image quality. They feel different in your hands. In this video, we will look at both in real dental conditions using the same flash, comparable macro systems and with both cameras configured as similarly as possible to achieve the most natural and accurate color reproduction. Let's dive in. The Sony A7C2 is compact and lightweight, around 500 grams. It's ideal for long chair side sessions or handheld video work. Inside, you'll get a 33 megapixel full frame sensor, intra body stabilization, and a flip screen. The Nikon Z5 II, around 700 grams, feels like a traditional DSLR. The deeper grip is comfortable for one handed operation with gloves or heavy lenses. And Nikon now includes a fully articulating screen, something the first Z5 was missing. For this comparison, both cameras were equipped with the Godox MF R7 6 TTL ring flash, ensuring identical lighting and exposure behavior. So, the Sony a little bit more compact and agile, Nikon solid, balanced and ergonomic. Let's talk about buttons and control. So the Nikon has this standard large buttons overall. You can manipulate everything with one hand, shutter speed, ISO, all the settings, aperture. Basically, you can control the camera with one hand. Sony a little bit more compact. You see less buttons overall. You have a button that can be programmed here to assign some functions. A slightly different concept of Sony, but both cameras feel good in the hands and are easy to control. Before we get to clinical performance, here's how we build the test rigs. Nikon Z5 2, Nikkor Z105 mm f.2 VR macro featuring an on-lens display for distance, magnification ratio, and f-stop. Great for precise documentation. Sony A7C2 plus the new Sony 100 mm G Mass and Macro with the 1.4 teleconverter reaching two time magnification, a real upgrade for extreme close ups. Both setups used identical flash power, exposure, and white balance calibration. So we could compare true color and tone as fairly as possible. Then there's the menu system, a difference you notice the first time you use each camera. Nikon's interface is almost unchanged since their early DSLRs. It's clean, color-coded, and easy to navigate. If you ever used the Nikon before, you feel right at home immediately. Sony's new menu system is powerful, flexible, but it can feel a little bit overwhelming at first. You can customize nearly everything, which is great once you learn it, but expect to spend some time setting it up for your workflow. Make use of the functions that you can program at the info button for Nikon, where you can put like the most important settings, image quality, white balance, file size, whatever you want. The same also for the Sony, it's called FN button, where you can assign all these settings. And in addition, both cameras have on the top dial, you have seen here, it's like U1, U2, U3. On the Sony, it's one, two, three. Assign settings to the number one U1 button for intraoral photography and to the number two U2 button for your portrait photography to speed up your workflow. Now, here are the core specifications. 
Sony A7C2, 33 megapixels, BSI sensor, same as the Sony A7 IV, ISO 100 to 51,200, 10 frames per second burst, IBIS around seven stops, 10 bit internal video, dual SD CF Express type A slots. Nikon Z52, 24 megapixel BSI sensor, ISO 100 to 51,200, around 11 frames per second, IBIS around five stops, 12 bit and raw or ProRes raw video, dual UHS 2 SD slots. Technically impressive. For dental photography, these differences don't change the clinical outcome. We shoot at ISO 100, F22 or higher, manual focus with focus peaking and flash illumination. So 24 versus 33 megapixel won't make a visible difference. What really matters are flash control, white balance and consistency. The Z52 sinks at 1 200th of a second. The A7C2 at 1 one sixty sounds significant. In reality, not at all. Exposure is defined by the flash burst, often 1 1,000th to 1 1 5,000th of a second. That's what freezes the image. The shutter only controls how much ambient LED light or any from operatory light leaks in. At 1 200th of a second, you cut about one third of a stop more ambient light than at 1 1 sixtieth of a second, practically invisible. The flash already freezes motion, so the difference is clinically irrelevant. So bottom line, both perform identically on the flash. Looking at colors side by side, both cameras deliver very natural tones. Out of camera, for me, Sony tends to be a touch cooler, more natural, and Nikon slightly warmer. But once you lock with balance at 5100K, they look almost identical. For consistent documentation, you might also go for a gray card. But if you know all the settings of your flash and so on, I would not make confusion with custom white balance settings. Go for Kelvin, start with 5300. If you have a Godox flash, go for 5100 and adjust accordingly. So in our test, I would say Sony performed great at 5100. Nikon had a, a slightly warmer touch, so I would maybe go down to 4900 to check this. And that's where it's also important to shoot JPEG and RAW in the beginning to have the two RAW files, for example, of an existing camera or here in this example of the Sony and Nikon camera that we can adjust and see what settings gives us the best result and let's say the most natural looking results. We also have videos on white balance settings and all the rest on the YouTube channel. Nikon's focus shift shooting looks great on paper, but chair side, it's almost impossible to use. Even tiny movement, patient breathing, mirror vibration, hand shift breaks the stack. It's fantastic for lab or product shots, but not for intraoral use. Stick to manual focus, fixed magnification ratios, and stable lighting for predictable results. And don't forget to use focus peaking as well. Autofocus is excellent on both, just different in feel. Sony A7C2 has AI subject detection, fast, sticky, and intuitive. Nikon Z52 with XP7 brings 3D tracking and eye autofocus that's now reliable and smooth. So Sony may be still a little bit faster and smarter. Nikon, steady and predictable. Both perfectly capable for clinical work. Battery life is solid on both cameras, around 250 to 300 macro shots per charge. The Sony has a slight advantage with USB-C power delivery, 
Well, I think Nikon Z5 has added this now as well. You can connect the power bank and shoot continuously, ideal for long filming or teaching sessions. If you also create video for education or marketing, well, personally, Sony shines a little bit more. We have on the A7C2 10-bit, S-Cinetone, HLG, 4K60 in crop, beautiful colors out of camera. Z5 II, 12-bit and RAW, 4K60 also in a crop, 96 megapixel shift stills, ideal for lab work. For creators, Sony, for studio precision, maybe Nikon. Both systems support tethering and clean HDMI output. Perfect for live teaching or microscope integration. Sony works with Imaging Edge, Nikon with NX Tether. If you run workshops or presentations, both will serve you well in educational setup. In practice, Sony's lightweight body is great for mobility, while Nikon's deeper grip offers confidence one-handed. Both felt well-balanced with their macro lenses and ring flash mounted. In daily clinical use, both systems perform great. Startup is instant, focus locks quickly, Maybe there's a small difference if we compare the viewfinder. So Nikon old school centered, which is not so bad because it's center above the, the lens. So this for people used to this old school focusing and looking through the viewfinder. Although today we more and more are using the back screen for focusing also here. The Nikon back screen has a higher resolution compared to the Sony. At the end, it's personal preferences. Here, the viewfinder is on one side. And I have to say, in the beginning, if you're looking through this and the camera is not centered, so the viewfinder is not centered over the lens, I had sometimes issues finding the center of my focus when shooting. But it's also something that you get used to. So this is more classic old school photography style, uh, which makes the camera also a little bit bigger, bulkier on the top because the viewfinder is there, has a higher resolution than the Sony viewfinder. But again, we are shooting more and more just holding the camera in the hand and looking at the back screen, which allows also shooting when wearing loops at the end. Personal preferences, both systems work great in daily business, in daily work, in clinical documentation, in the operatory. So which is better? Honestly, for me, there's no clear winner. Both Sony and Nikon are excellent tools for dental professionals, producing natural, true life colors and reliable performance. For me, Sony is slightly more versatile if you also produce videos or social content thanks to its size and creator features. But if you prefer a classic grip, a photo-first interface and a straightforward workflow, Nikon feels fantastic as well. Both systems can deliver perfect clinical results when set up properly. So one last point. The ecosystem. Nikon's Z mount has fantastic native lenses, but third party options are a little bit less available. Sony's E mount ecosystem is massive with Sigma Tamron and Samyang offering great macro lenses too. Both work perfectly with Godox flashes, but if you plan to expand into creative or video work, Sony actually today gives you more flexibility. My standard dental setup, manual mode with focus peaking, ISO 100. You might even raise it a little bit, especially for portrait photography, but that's a different topic. F22 to F29 shutter, 1160 to 1200 of a second, and the fixed white balance at 5100K. That's because we are shooting with Godox flashes. Otherwise, start at 5,300K. Shoot RAW and JPEG 
and keep lighting consistent. In dental photography, consistency beats automation every time. So tell me, which team are you on, Sony or Nikon? At the end of the day, it's not about the brand. It's about which camera helps you tell your clinical story naturally. Both Nikon and Sony are incredible tools that make daily documentation smoother and more consistent. Choose the one that fits your hands and your workflow best. Comment below and tell me why. If you comment Sony or Nikon, I'll send you my macro photography checklist and white balance guide as part of the free dental photography Bible. And don't forget to subscribe to Dental TV for more photo and video tips, all made by dentists for dentists. See you next time.